What if I told you at least one of the following useful math tricks were never taught to you in school? By the end of this video, you'll have gained at least one additional math hack that you can apply to your studies. Number one, divisibility by three. Have a look at the following three numbers. Which of them is divisible by three? Well, here's the trick. Instead of dividing each number and checking for a remainder, simply add up each digit and check if the sum is a multiple of three. If it is, then the number itself will be a multiple of three. The digits for 7068 add up to 21. This is a multiple of three. Hence, it's also the only one which will be divisible by three. Pretty handy. Number two, simple percentages. Have a look at the following two questions. 12% of 25 versus 25% of 12. Which is easier to solve? Well, fortunately, they both give us the same solution. In general, x percent of y equals y percent of x. This is a percentage fact many people either forget or aren't taught at all. Therefore, if asked to solve a problem like 12% of 25, first check whether it's easier to solve it the other way around. In this case, 25% of 12 is certainly the easier problem. We can find 25% or a quarter very quickly in our head, giving us an answer of 3. If you were to take 12% of 25, you would in fact get the same answer. We'll try this with one more quick problem. Find 18% of 50. The solution to this problem will be the same as finding 50% of 18. This can quickly be solved as half of 18, which is 9. Number 3. Comparing fractions. There is an extremely quick way to compare fractions. Have a look at the following problem. Which is the larger of 3 over 7 or 6 over 13? Well, simply multiply opposing numerators and denominators and compare their values. And that's it. This is the most efficient way to solve problems like these as it requires the fewest steps. A similar technique is featured in the butterfly method for adding or subtracting fractions. But if you're only comparing fractions, this very speedy method will do. Number four, terminating versus recurring decimals. When presented with various fractions, there is an easy way to test whether a fraction will terminate or leave us with a recurring value. An example of each is the following. One over eight equals 0 0.125, and one over six equals 0 0.1666 recurring. The first fraction has a terminating decimal and the second a recurring. But how to know whether a fraction will terminate or recur? Well, it turns out, if the denominator of the fraction consists of only factors 2 and 5, the fraction will terminate. In all other cases, it will have at least some portion that will recur. So, if we considered the following three fractions, we should easily be able to spot which fractions will have a terminating decimal. The first breaks down to 3 over 5 cubed. Since the denominator of the fraction only consists of 5, it will terminate. The denominator of the second breaks down to 2 cubed multiplied by 5 squared. Again, since the denominator of the fraction only consists of factors of 2 and 5, it will also terminate. The prime factor decomposition of the final denominator contains a value which isn't 2 or 5. Therefore, this one will have a recurring value. It equals 0 0.0038615 with the 384615 portion recurring over and over. That concludes the tips. I hope at least one of them was something you hadn't known already. Be sure to like and share the video if you found it at all useful and follow the link on screen to continue your learning streak.